recursive function, the human term. Mark, I was wondering whether a function can call itself. Oh yes, John, a function can invoke itself once or any number of times and this is what called as recursion. Let me try to explain it, it to you with an example of human tower which I happen to see on my way to airport. All right. But before you tell me about recursion, what is a human tower? A hum human tower is created by men standing on shoulders of the men standing at the lower level. It can have any number of levels. Each level will have two men less than the previous level. However, there will always be one person at the top of the tower. That means there will be always be odd number of men standing at the bottom of most or base level. So if there are five men at the top at the at the bottom, five minus two men will be in the middle level, the top level one man will be there. Suppose you want to find the total weight of a human tower which has five people standing at the bottom level. Assume that each person weighs 50 kg and there will always be odd number of men at the base level. We can solve this problem recursively. Have a look. So this is a function called total weight, weight of human tower, human tower 5. Do not get confused. This print statement is of um, Python version 2. So human tower of 5, this is a function called 5 is passed here. And it checks if number of people equal to equal to 1, then it runs 1 into, 1 into 50. Otherwise, what it says, number of people into 50, right? If it is not 1, currently it is 5. Then what happens? 5 into 50 plus human tower of 5 minus 2, 3. So 3 will be called again. So 5 into 50, 250 will be kept aside. Now 3, it comes down. 3 into 50, 150. So 250 plus 150, then human tower of 3 minus 2, 1. So uh, number of people equal to equal to 1. So totally we get 250 plus 150 plus 50. Look at this. This is all it returns. So please uh, uh, be familiar with this, this, this terminology and the execution process. It will help you to understand much complex problem in an easier way. In an easier way. Now one recursive function call uh, become multiple of recursive. Now for the first time it will be 5, the next time it will be 3, the last time it will be 1. In recursion two things are important, termination condition and recursive call. A recursive call invokes itself with a smaller argument and the termination condition helps to terminate the recursive calls. If you look at this number of people equal to equal to 1, this is termination condition and this is a recursive call and it is being called with the smaller argument. Try out the below code. Make the necessary changes in the code to find the total weight for a human tower with 35 people at the base level. Assume that there will, there will always be a odd number of men at the base level of the human tower. So this example gives us a uh, human tower weight for 5. So to check 35, very simple, run this and this will be the 16,200 will be the output of weight of the human tower with the men of 35 at base level. So what will happen if the termination condition is wrong? It will end up calling itself infinitely and the program may not stop or it may throw an error. Look at this example. Here we have given a condition equal to equal to 1. We start with odd number. Now we check equal to equal to 1. Termination condition because odd number we subtract it to minus 2. So if you are going to compare with an odd number that is fine. Since you are comparing it with a 0, it does not come to end. So it will throw error. This is how it goes up. So all you need to do is just to change here, 1, put a 1 and execute, you will get the result. Total graphics, graphics, the below program is written to recursively to draw spirals. In this program and see how it works. So it takes um, draw a spiral is the uh, function name, it is being called again and again. So it has two parameters, my turtle, turtle object, then the line length. So first time it is, when it is called it is 160, right, then 150, 140, it comes up to when it is less than or equal to 0, right, it, when it becomes 0, till then it executes. You can also um, try with len minus 20 also, <coughs> which, which gives us a bit smaller spiral. You can also try with 5, 
when you give less than that it might all you need to do is it simply need to draw a line forward forward means wherever it is it will go to this line then we say right it has to the turtle facing this direction has to turn right 90 degree it comes down I mean turns this side then what happens um, you know it, it, it then the function is called again after turning right the function is called again with the laser value then it is executed that is how the flow goes in write us to the code to move from start s to end e in the maze note you can drag and drop the pseudocode magnets to the pseudocode box and create the appropriate pseudocode so we know that a function call should be in a place at the, at the top at the bottom then we we'll have to have code for function definition so this is it so this is a function call sorry this is a function call so from which the flow moves there you have start equal to equal to end if that's going to be uh, as it by end position then it has to return then if it is not so if next uh, if next is not blocked so it has to keep moving right if it is not blocked it has to keep moving move forward when it is blocked we have to move right then we call the function again that's how this recursive function works forward when there is a block turn right forward that is how it works so tower of anai problem tower of anai is another problem which can be used to learn recursion this problem was discovered by french mathematician edouard lucas in 1883 rules move only one disk at a time rings must be in decreasing size no move should result in a larger disk on top of a smaller disk for temporarily holding a disk the third tower can be used so this up we there's a uh, from a to b we we'll have to move we will use a is source and b is destination and c is a temporary holder let's understand how the solution can be defined recursively for transferring three rings from tower a to tower b step 1 two rings moved from tower a to c look at this two rings moved from tower a to c we cannot have larger disk on a smaller uh, disk so we move larger smaller disk to b then bit larger to mid size medium size uh, disk to c then we move uh, b to small disk to c so this is a task one solution one is arrived for two rings using a source as tower c as destination and b as a temporary tower then <coughs> a ring is transferred from tower a to tower b from here to here we move then two rings moved from tower c to tower b these two rings we move from tower c to tower b solution is arrived for two ring for two rings using c as a source tower b as a destination tower and a as a temporary tower so now we going to solution is arrived for two two rings using c as a source tower this is a source tower b as a destination tower this is going to be destination tower but we use a as a temporary tower now what we do we, we move this smaller ring to a then what we do we move this mid size ring to b then finally we move uh, smaller ring to b so that is this how we have moved three rings from tower a to tower b so we have created a list in which we have three colors blue green orange and we love to move these three items to destination so we also have a temporary holder before we understand this it's better we go back and look at the program the first program human tower program and visualize its result let's visualize this so the program flow starts from <clears throat> we call this by function using human tower of 5 if number of number of people equal to 5 if number of people equal to equal to 1 no it is not so it comes to else part so what we do return number of people into 50 which means 5 into 50 plus human tower of number of people minus 2 so what will happen and another instance will be created recursive call will be created for the human tower of number of people minus 2 5 minus 2 3 then what will happen it goes up the the flow comes back here now the number of people are 3 now the number of people if checks it is equal to equal to 1 no it is not so then what happens it comes down previously it was 5 into 50 plus <coughs> right then um, uh, then now 3 into 50 it will become 3 into 50 look at this another instance is created 3 into 50 plus number of people minus 2 becomes 1 So number of people equal to equal to one. Yes, we get one. So what happens? So it returns one into fifty. Then what happens? This return one into fifty, fifty. And this function three into fifty plus one into fifty. So we get two hundred. Then what happens? 
250 plus 200 250 plus 200 it gives us 450 that's how recursive function works so i have told you at the beginning so we need to remember this human tower of 5 calls human tower of 5 plus human tower of 3 then plus human tower of 1 so we get the, we should get the uh, least value human tower of 1 then only there is a termination condition then we get the result for this then finally we get this so we add up the whole and get the result so this this uh, it might be a bit confusing but it's uh, logically it's very easy you will have to remember we call uh, create a list with three values you may create a list with two values also that is not a problem right for now let's create a list with two values then we will have to say uh, you know two two or the two disk or two, two values are we are passing source destination and depth these are three parameters we are passing across <coughs> so this is termination condition and this is a recursive call this is also a recursive call so you can easily split this code into three pieces one is termination condition n equal to equal to one when it, when it becomes n value one then what do you, if there are only one element is available you straight away pop the element from source and insert it into destination very simple when you have more than one then that's why we need to use a temporary variable right so all you need to do is in the first condition right please do write this code come delete this section of the code and write it again and again do it for five times visualize this output and you will understand better look at this n will always remain same n will become n minus one and all that but source here source destination temp here the parameter changes source temp destination then finally reverse of this temp temp destination and source it changes the same and the operation reminds him disk is equal to we take the disk out temporarily hold it and insert it in a place so the same condition the same code here also disk is equal to source dot pop off destination dot insert of zeroth position and disk this is, this is what we do so it's an easy code to remember but uh, remember the uh, do a line by line uh, section by section uh, recursive calls go to the last least call then get the result then add it to the i mean let's see how the it goes visualize it to understand things better so i've taken two values for now let's understand how this works value of n is 2 there's a source goes up n equal to equal to 1 no it is not so it comes down now we are, we are we are calling a recursive function so one more call will be created the value of n will be the n minus 1 the value of n will be 2 now if it, the value of n is going to be 3 then it will have uh, n equal to 3 n equal to 2 n equal to 1 tower of finite the same function will be called thrice because it's a recursive function now we pass the parameter but the change is when this function is called the source remains same but temp is substituted to destination right and destination is this substituted to temp when this will be called then the last function the recursive function will be called that time temp will be substituting source destination will be substituting destination i mean destination no change in that and source will be substituting temp when this last recursive function is called look at this it comes down currently value of n is one right so we'll have to pop a zeroth element blue blue will be popped now then the same thing will be destination the temporary folder in temp right temp which is pointed to temp in that it will be popped it will be inserted blue is inserted to the temp you understand yes then what will happen it returns then comes down again after this once more one more time we <coughs> for the n is equal to two we'll have to pop the other value also was popped green also is popped now popped now we insert into another list so disk is temp and destination is holding the value right now this function is called when this uh, the recursion is called right it actually changes in other way the value of source and uh, destination uh, changes source and uh, temp swaps source and temp swaps now this value will be added to this so this value will be taken and add to that in the zeroth position insertion takes place at the zeroth position so so tower of kanai when it is one one time call tower of kanai when the value of n is two for one is called then two is also it's called 
then it returns run. Finally, this is the output. So blue green we had it there in the source. Now we are having it in the destination. Uh, the, uh, it might be a bit confusing. I want you to practice again and again. Uh, very carefully uh, watch the line building execution. I, it will help you to understand this problem statement better. But remember this, there is a logic behind this. How they use the code. They are not modifying. They are not modifying. Disk is equal to source.pop, destination.insert. They are not modifying these two lines of code. So what they do is, they play with variables, parameters, source, temp. And this time they are substituting this to source. Temp will be substituted as a source. Right? There is a change in this source temp value. There is a change in destination value. Why? Because the code remains same. These two code remain same. They are playing with these arguments. I'll try to have a, a clear, you know, representation of picture, a pictorial representation of this problem statement, uh, line by line, maybe a little later. So, what is the output of the following code snippet? So, we know that function seven is called. It comes down uh, is not less than two. Seven divided by two equal to equal to two. No, this is also not the wrong. In order to use number minus one, six into function of six, it is being called. 5, 4, 3 does not work, then 2, sorry, 4 does not work, 3 into function of 3, 2 into function of 3. So finally, we will give a result like this. And recursive function gets as a result something similar to this. Watch this. This is how the whole recursion works. Function of 7 gets as function of 6, return 6 into function of 6. So we will have to get the value for function of 6. So to get the value of function of 6, it's a recursive function. So return, it returns 5 into function of 5. Returns 4 into function of 5. So we see this 6 into 4, 240. 5 into 8, 40. For now we get like this result. <clears throat> it starts from here. We will not start getting results from here. We actually get results from here. It returns to this. It returns to this. This is how it is processed. This is the beauty of the recursive function. So if you, if you could go back and look at the code of Tower of Hanai, you can understand visualize the same way <clears throat> the pictorial representation if you could visualize this way you can actually understand things better so from here it returns one then it one into one then two into one and then it returns two right two uh, no changes simply call the function three we get three four into eight two so we get here we get return four into function of four function of four up to four we got two eight so return 5 into function of 5. Up to 5, we got 8. 5 into 8, 40. So up to function of 6, return 6 into function of 6. Function of 6 has returned 40. 6 into 40, 240.